Hi, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about understanding to turn them off in imagery. Um, yesterday we had a chance to take a look at how do readers actually read images. And you gave a lot of really good ideas to that question, some including looking at the background and the setting, facial expressions, investigating the pieces that we do know about the work, as well as the things that we may not know about the work, um, taking a look at the actions of what's happening in the actual image, um, investigating for details and seeing what the details might reveal um, in some of our inferences. And as we, as we infer and, and kind of make those conclusions, um, it leads us to more questions and things that we can talk about with those images. Today, we're going to take it a step further. And we're going to be talking about how we take those images and we disrupt them to create new images and new messages, um, which is kind of the heart of a determinant. So it's pronounced determinant. It is a French word. And um, its origins really kind of take place in this idea of disrupting or hijacking an actual image to create a new message that creates awareness or takes a stand or pushes back at something that currently exists. Um, so they aren't just images for the sake of images. They are actually images that are reconstructed for things that currently exist to create messages that allow people to think differently about things. Um, we're going to go over a couple of examples here so that you can kind of think through and kind of get planted into your brain about what that actually means and what that could look like and how that could impact your thinking and decision making as a creator this week. So let's take a look at some of these examples. Um, you might recognize the original image and I'm going to bring your eyes to the to the image on the left. There's two images here. So the image on the left, um, if you're a Pepsi drinker, you might recognize that as the Pepsi logo. One of the things is the next question states is how has the image changed? And so if you kind of take a look, you've noticed that this artist hasn't done too much. We still see the the image or the roundness of the logo. We can tell that it's a Pepsi logo still, but there's a few things or elements that have been added to kind of create a whole different meaning and message. So we see the arms and we see the, the face. Um, I even notice a little bit of maybe drool coming out of the mouth, um, legs and, and a belly button. Um, a lot of what this question, next question is asking is what does the new image represent? What messages or message might it be conveying or showing. Um, we might interpret this message as um, something that Pepsi is um, connected to in terms of like lots of soda consumption or lots of soda drinking leads to weight gain because of the amount of sugars that are in it. And we can tell by the image that this is an overweight person who um, is drinking a lot of Pepsi. So a lot of decision making that went into this Determinant is taking something that already exists to create a more meaningful, more important, more critical um, image to kind of push back at something that already exists. So in this case, we're taking a look at um, obesity and the connections that soda can play into those different spaces. So let's take a look at some other examples. This original print here was the cover of the Beatles Abbey Road album. So this is the original original print. Um, let's take a look at its Determinama. So a couple of things that I want you to kind of pause and talk about. You know, how has the image changed? What does the new image represent? What messages might be conveyed in this showing or in this in this particular message? A little bit of things um, before you turn and talk, possibly. Um, based on the University of California campus officer, Lieutenant John Pike, and his use of pepper spray on students during a peaceful protesting throughout the 1960s. So just to kind of give you a little context about um, who that person um, is uh, in, in the um, officer's costume, or officer, not costume, in the officer's uniform. 
So I wanna, what I want you to do is I'm going to encourage you to kind of pause this video for a moment. I want you to take a look at um, this new image. You had a chance to take a look very briefly on the, the original image. And I want you to think about these questions. And then when you're done talking, I want you to turn this video back on. So hopefully you had a chance to take a look at what this is possibly saying. I imagine you might have had some conversation around um, what you might know about the Beatles, what you might know about this particular officer's role in protesting. Um, you can tell that this is uh, Pepper Spray. Some of you might have made connections to the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. Um, there's lots of things that you can see, but you can tell that this, this idea that, um, while the Beatles are, uh, music that's built around peace and love and harmony, um, this Determinama actually speaks out against the actions of this particular officer during this time of peaceful protesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So here's the original print. This is something that we see every day. It hangs in our classrooms. It might be in, in our homes. It might also be in um, other public spaces that we see all the time. So let's take a look at the Determinama. I'm gonna encourage you to think about the two questions. How has this image changed? And what do you think it represents? What do you think the message is trying to say with this, with this new Determinama? I'm going to have you turn off the video for a moment, turn and talk to each other, and think about what this new message is saying. Hopefully you had a chance to take a look at what this particular new print is talking about. Usually, you know, we see the stars um, in the blue section of our flag. At this point, the stars have been disrupted or hijacked to in place like a lot of our logos that we see. In, um, in today's media spaces. And um, this could definitely be a pull on how capitalism plays a role in American culture, how popular, popular culture or like consumerism plays a big role in American culture. It could also lend its way into kind of critically looking at um, who has the power or who owns America, so to speak. Um, there, there's lots of types of discussions that could be coming out of this as we kind of lean into seeing the logos that are associated with this Determinama print and the message that this creator is, is sending. You're doing well. Let's keep going. We see this every day in lots of different spaces. Um, and, and we know that Google is a big part of, of what we do. Um, so let's take a look at the Determinama. Okay. Again, I'm going to ask you to, to take a moment and think about the two questions. How has this changed? What does the new image represent? What messages might it be conveying or showing? I'm going to ask you to pause the video and turn and talk to each other and take a look at those questions with each other. Hopefully you had a chance to take a look and you notice that it looks very similar. The, the constructor of this Determinama used the same font, the same color structure, um, but they changed the word. So from Google, they used the word control. And they could have used anything in the world to be able to convey this message, but they chose this particular word. So there's a lot to be said about this. It's, it's a very simple Determinama. But there, there's a lot of hijacking that's going on because it's a very powerful word that um, can speak to the direction of Google, people's use of Google, the, how Google is, is used in so many ways, not only um, nationally, but internationally. Um, and, and I think in some ways that this artist is really speaking to the amount of power and influence that one company can potentially have. Let's take a look at a, another one. You might recognize this particular image as Mr. Monopoly. Anybody who's ever played the Monopoly game or has seen Monopoly before, you might recognize the logo for, for Monopoly here. He's usually seen on, on advertisements and um, in the covers of the game itself. Um, so let's take a look at the what the artist did as a Determinama. 
Here we see a different take on Mr. Monopoly. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to take a look at the same two questions. How has the image changed? And what does the new image represent? And what do these messages might be conveying or showing? Um, take a look and remember the things that we used yesterday to kind of analyze, um, looking at facial expressions, looking at the background, um, maybe possibly investigating or inferring what's happening. Understand that Mr. Monopoly um, is known for a, a money a money type game, you know, getting properties, getting riches. Um, this to turn them off speaks differently. So I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and turn and talk to each other about what you see, what this artist did as a determinant and what they hijacked and, and what they did to create a new message. Coming back, hopefully you had an opportunity to have some good discussion around this image because um, if you've probably noticed in your group, you probably noticed some, um, some tents, which maybe we can assume that, that might be some sort of homeless population, possibly. Um, I know as I investigated this piece, this was actually taken from the Seattle area, which has a very high concentration of, of homeless people. Um, and understanding that Mr. Monopoly was, was made um, not to be the, the rich icon, but in fact, the opposite. Um, this might be pulling on, you know, look, examining this population in our country itself, <coughs> excuse me, or the hope that, you know, getting land and money and, and, and things that are, that are about making those decisions may not exist in our country anymore. There's lots of things that the artists could have definitely allowed us to interpret in, in constructing this particular piece. Now it's time to create. Now that you've kind of gone through, you've seen some originals, you've had time to talk about it, you've looked at Determinamas, you can continue looking up Determinamas because it is, it is a popular art form. Um, but in your case, it is time to, to start creating yours. You're becoming the creator. Um, so there are three things that I'm going to encourage you to do, do during this work time, um, both this morning and this afternoon. Um, number one, you created uh, a Determinamas construction guide yesterday. You made a copy of that um, into your student portfolio. Um, if you haven't, it is linked on this presentation, which will be located on your agenda, and you're free to make a copy of that. Um, so part one of this Determinamas construction guide really allows you to brainstorm and think about those big ideas that we've had in connection to our media unit. Remember, we're going to be taking original things that exist, and our hijacking has to do with the big ideas of media. So in some cases, you may have already done this in your reader's notebook, or you know, you might be looking at the group poster that hangs in our classroom, um, or you might be looking at the slides you participated in yesterday, I'm thinking specifically for fifth and seventh hours. Um, but you may want to definitely complete part one. I would encourage you to put, to complete part one just so that you have a good idea of from all those pieces in part one, um, which, which, which area are you going to be focusing on specifically? Um, what kind of message do you specifically want to convey so that that makes a difference in terms of like what you choose to hijack? Okay. Um, also, since your since your copy is digital, there is, I believe, an image of like a brainstorming web, and you'll see that once you start clicking on it. I would encourage you to maybe delete that image and just use that blank space as a way for you to um, maybe pull in things from your notebook, pull in things from your group poster pull in things from the slide work that you might have participated in yesterday. So that could be, a, since it's a digital document, you can use that as a way to um, kind of take your notes and, and highlight the things that, that you really want to focus in on. Part one is really about focusing in on those big ideas. Um, once you're finished with part one, I want to continue your thinking into part two. Okay, part two is really thinking about your big ideas and the images that you could use to hijack to create a new image or a new message. You may want to spend some time investigating images, and you can use the digital version of this organizer to insert those images. 
So you might see in lines and boxes. And if those things can be taken away, you can delete those things to kind of create the, a more digital friendly um, space for you. That's totally fine. Part two is a lot about playing and tinkering with ideas that you could create. It's what we would consider brainstorming or pre-writing in the writing process. From part two, um, decide on what big idea that you'll focus on for this work and the image um, you will hijack. So it's basically taking the ideas that you brainstormed or you pre-wrote, deciding on one concept and moving forward with that concept. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm willing to help at any time.